Joining us live uh, via Skype is Barista Emeka Mwanko and also is uh, Sandra Eboro, who is a legal practitioner. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Thank you for having me in the show. All right. Um, very quickly, in the midst of the rising numbers of infected people, especially in Lagos, uh, that bears the load of 50% of confirmed case cases. Is it not right that something drastic needs to be done to, to secure isolation centers, uh, isolation centers rather, which we are told are in short supply? What are your thoughts, Sandra? I, I totally agree with you that, um, you know, this, given the current situation, there's a very rise in the increase of cases right now in the country. And so the government actually needs to do something drastic to be able to secure isolation centers. However, what I do have challenges with is the manner with which the government is going about the situation, right? So um, we see from the very first instance when um, you know they announced the coronavirus and you know the increase in cases we saw how um, private institutions came out to you know donate um, some 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 sum of money to be able to create embed spaces for isolation center raise up temporary structures and all of that but we haven't really seen what the government is doing actually to secure other spaces rather than you know, all of a sudden springing up a bill to, you know, try to take out, take off private properties to convert them to, you know, isolation centers. This actually doesn't boil down well with me. I think that there are other measures which the government should have put in place and not um, trying to convert private properties to isolation centers. All right, Sandra. Now, this bill, we are told, has already passed second reading, Sandra. It's a record speed, if you like, for our legislators. Again, is this not commendable? So, for me, I think it is commendable. It is actually laudable. It, shows, it goes to show that over the years, Nigeria, we've actually been sleeping, mm -hmm. right? Because if a bill can pass through the first and second reading under two hours, it shows that the legislation, the legislation over the over the years, over time, have been you know probably um, it has been several attempts to delay passage of laws. However, many people or the thoughts going on is perhaps there's an underlying factor for such speed. Perhaps there is you know there's there's some form of okay controversy. Why are they rushing to actually pass this bill? I don't even get me. Why is there such speed towards passing a bill that clearly deprives citizens of their fundamental human rights? Why are they such in a hurry? And also, you stated that you stated that you know some of the members of the house alleged that they were not given or they were not given a copy of this bill to actually read through before it. So, but the question is, how did it pass through the first and second reading without members of the house? actually getting a copy so how then did they debate on the bill how then was it passed so it is both commendable but then it raises a lot of questions underlying questions